Sean's Sports Show is presented by Paperhead.com, the leader in sportsbook management software. And now, live from Hollywood, California, it's Sean's Sports Show. Tonight's starting lineup at guest, hailing from Denver, Colorado, it's Jared Quay. Coaching Sean's Sports Show is Coach T. I'm Chicago's favorite sidekick, John Huck. Now please give it up for Bethlehem, Pennsylvania's own, the host of Sean's Sports Show, Sean Green. The Sean Sports Show. I'm your host, Sean Green. You know, Mother's Day was this past Sunday, and I know everyone thinks they have the best mom, but truly, that award belongs to Allen Iverson's mother. Here we go. We got a uh, photo of Allen Iverson's mom braiding his hair during a game. We're not talking about practice, we're talking about a game. Imagine how much confidence that takes. You're the smallest guy in the court, your mom is braiding your hair on the sideline, and you're the guy talking shit. That's how good Allen Iverson was. <laughs> his mom is sitting there braiding his hair. Um, so recently, the New York Times had a, uh, they, they, they discovered this old description of Babe Ruth playing baseball, and uh, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> Basically, it's, all right, Bowser, can you stop it, bring it back? <laughs> um, all right, we're getting the prompter up because this is really important to read this verbatim of what the New York Times said about Babe Ruth. Quote, no one knows this better than Ruth. Basically, they're calling him a giant person, and that is why when he hits the ball, he makes home runs. The fact is, that's the only way he can score a run. If he made a single, the only way he could get around the bases would be in an automobile or a motorcycle. So he chose the alternative of poking the ball out of the lot, walking leisurely around the excursion route. Basically... <laughs> The New York Times wrote the longest fat joke of all time. Uh, Pro Football Journal, they just uh, made news, they made headlines, rarely do you see this. They just tweeted out a uh, photo of Ahmad Rashad from his wedding. Now I know what you're thinking, um, Ahmad Rashad, his wedding, what's, what's interesting about that? Well, if you take a look at the groomsmen, we can bring this up, that's right, his groomsmen are O.J. Simpson and Bill Cosby. <laughs> Possibly the worst all-time groomsman of all time. Now, clearly, his, uh, his marriage is... This, this is a guy who has had five marriages, right? Um, <laughs> all right so now, if you're, if you're Ahmad Rashad, right, uh, you have to be thinking... Oh, okay. Well, listen, when the whole OJ thing happens, you got to be like, all right, well, listen, this photo's a waste, but hey, my boy, Bill Cosby, he's not going to let me down. Not Bill Cosby. And then, oh no, Bill Cosby. I imagine, I haven't seen photos from Marriage 4 or 5, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming Ray Lewis is somehow involved. <laughs> This, this photo in and of itself has led me to believe one thing, and that is Ahmad Rashad has done something horrific. We just don't know about it yet. Oh, I see a lot of Ahmad Rashad fans in the crowd. All right, and uh, lastly, in other news, ESPN announced uh, their new Monday Night Football crew. It's a, it's a three-man booth featuring Booger McFarlane, Joe Testatori, and their big star, Jason Witten. I know what you're thinking, Sean, if they wanted a washed up tight end who's great on camera, why didn't they just call you? I'm surprised I didn't get it because I nailed the audition for Monday Night Football. Here it is. Take a look. Welcome everyone to Monday Night Football. I am Sean Green here to break down slash announce the matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the Oakland Raiders, two teams neither of whom are the Philadelphia Eagles. So we're going to try and enjoy this one regardless. Second and 10 for the Los Angeles Rams. Jared Goff drops back, hands it off to... <laughs> What's that guy's name again? You know that guy used to... Uh, the guy with the dreads. God damn it. Uh, Jared Goff drops back, screen pass to Todd Gurley. He's cutting, he's cutting. He could go. Just a reminder, Tower 7 was a controlled demolition all the way to the touchdown. Rams. Third down and seven. This is a pivotal third down for the Oakland Raiders. 
Derek Carr drops back. He's scanning. He's scanning. He looks. He throws a touchdown. End zone dance is going on. Look at that end zone dance. He's dancing. He's dancing. He's dancing. Roger Goodell is a soulless, soulless coward. Welcome back, everyone, to Sean's Sports Show. The only sports show whose host almost choked on a quarter at a swim meet. True story, John. I know. Coming out, coming out swinging with that. Okay, so... Here it is. I know what you're thinking. Oh, was it some sort of he choked on the own pool water? Uh, what happened? No, this is what happened. So, a young Sean Green, fifth grade swim team. I go and I swim get swim team. Swim team. Okay, yeah. Okay. Swim team. I go and uh, before the match. Now this was before sports science, sports nutrition. I went and got a bunch of chili fries <laughs> uh, before the meet. Loaded up. You're, needed you're some hungry. Yeah. Loading. Needed some fuel. Now, I'm going to, uh, I had the change in my hand, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm going and I'm trying to figure out where, like, where the meat is, when is the meat starting, and I'm there pointing it out with a quarter. My fingers are greased up. Luck would have it, the greased up quarter slips out of my fingers, lands right in my mouth. So here I am, a nine-year-old Sean Green in a Speedo, just chugged some chili fries, <laughs> nearly choking to death, trying to give myself uh, CPR, it was it was quite a nightmare. Well, I will say this. Yes, that sounds like a nightmare, but good for you for being a nine-year-old that could be comfortable in a Speedo. <laughs> I'm very you had impressed. to be, man. That's what it was. You had to be in a Speedo. It was all about wind resistance, or sure. I guess in that... Uh, water in the, resistance. Yeah, water resistance. Aerodynamics. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. Water Aerodynamics. Dynamics. It all makes sense. John, I don't know yeah. if you heard, look, sports gambling just got legalized. I did hear. I don't really understand it, but I did hear. Yes. Yeah, so basically, if you guys aren't following, sports gambling, they, there was a constitutional law that said you couldn't even decide whether or not you wanted to bet on sports. They pulled that out, and now states can decide whether or not they uh, can allow sports betting. And it was, it was a pretty great way to find out about the news. Me, huge sports gambling advocate, co-host of the Sports Gambling Podcast. I woke up in the morning, my phone's just blowing up, my fiance comes in she's like hey good morning did you hear they uh, they repealed the sports gambling act I go oh is everyone texting you as well and she goes no not at all <laughs> so it was just clearly me why would, why would anyone Tess did you hear that they uh, <laughs> sports gambling is legal uh-huh the past three things past three things that I've gotten texted about the most is one being engaged two the Eagles winning the Super Bowl and three the appeal of the sports gambling amendment so in order which did you get more texts about being engaged, or did you get more texts about I'm the not Eagles? Gonna, I'm not going to answer that, John. the Eagles. You got more texts about the Eagles. I did. Yeah. Uh, listen, hey, the, Eagles are, the Eagles are number one. No, I'm kidding. Uh, wedding, wedding is number one in my power rankings. John, yeah. I always... Uh, football's always on my brain. Big fan of Gronk. I hung out with him. I was lucky enough no, to you guys do that. Are... Best bros, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, besides dreaming of one day hanging out with Gronk, my other... My other kind of dream was that I wanted to write an action movie. And I think Gronk is kind of the best person to star in said action movie. Oh, yeah. He even put out a video that really just sets it up. So if you could take a list or take a watch of Gronk. <laughs> take a watch. Take a watch. Have take a, a gander have on a the screen. See. All right. That, I mean, how awesome is that? First off, it's so great to see Gronk kind of do that stuff, and he's just like, wow, okay, that's awesome. Also, you got to give it up for Gronk. I think he's probably the first guy who's ever fired a Gatling gun while also wearing mesh shorts. Yeah, probably. I, I'm surprised they let him <laughs> do that. But Yeah, listen, there's no gun laws in this country, clearly, if Gronk's firing off Gatling guns and mesh shorts. No John, if laws. you had to, uh, I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but if you sure. had to write an action movie <clears throat> with one athlete starring in it, who would it be and why? I think it would be a combo of, um, I would have, I would put Brian Bosworth in it because yes. he's already the done boss. several action movies. Um, and then I would probably put like an Anthony Rizzo in there. Oh, okay. As like a younger sidekick, kind of like a like a like a Lethal Weapon situation. You know, like one one guy's crazy, he's off the 
off the cuff, and then one guy's like more by the book. The new rookie is like, yeah, you gotta have the off. good cop, bad cop. Yeah, I like it. Well, John, while we're while we're on the subject of talking Gronk, Gronk news. <laughs> Gronk. I don't know. Hey, listen, it's time for the Gronk report. A little <laughs> bit more about Gronk during the Super Bowl. Uh, against the Eagles, his house was robbed. So not only was he robbed of the chance of winning the Super Bowl, thanks to the Eagles, he was also literally robbed by people. Uh, first off, I don't know what kind of maniacs rob Rob Gronkowski, but a couple hoods robbed Rob Gronkowski. Fortunately for Gronk, they recovered all the stuff that were stolen. They caught the guys. <coughs> they arrested them. Now, I was reading the article, and it was great because they were going over the items that they recovered from the Gronk robbery and it included his Rolex watch, his Apple watch, <coughs> and a collection of rare antique coins. <laughs> That's right. Rob Gronkowski, <sighs> huge what? coin collector. How I, I got to say... Collection? Possibly the most unlikely coin collector of all time. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, <laughs> no. I mean, I feel listen. like that's somebody. I think I feel like someone a long time ago was like, "Hey, man, hang on to these coins." He's like, "Okay, I'll put them <laughs> in a safe." And he put them in a safe for something they got robbed. He's like, "My coins." <laughs> So I was shocked to hear that Rob Gronkowski was a coin collector, but I did a little bit of digging and I hit up the police and I said, hey, can I get some photos of these <clears throat> Rob Gronkowski coins? The cops obliged, and here we go. This is the first coin from Rob Gronkowski's coin collection. And here you go. <laughs> Take a look at that. It's uh, a Massachusetts 1788. <laughs> Looks like a silver dollar. And it's in honor of Scott Bowser, the man who told the first 69 jokes. Very, so I can see, very important. <laughs> can see why Gronk would enjoy collecting that coin. He's immortalized. Nice little in Gronk we trust at the bottom. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at Gronk's next coin that we recovered. <laughs> okay, and that's his, uh, in honor of me for shooting this gun. Bam, bam, bam. I, I don't know how he already had an antique coin made of himself, but <clears throat> hey, there you go. He's Gronk. In Gronk we trust. And lastly. <laughs> should say wow underneath. <laughs> wow, awesome. He kind of looks like Hulk Hogan there uh, with, his, with the way yeah. his body is. Okay, and there we go. Lastly, his last coin in honor of Mark Sullivan, the man who invented butt chugging. Sure. Give it up for... <laughs> Give it up for Gronk and yes. his coins. Beautiful. All right, John. We were just talking about sports gambling. The sports gambling ban has just been overturned, and what better time to become your own bookie? That's right. Our friends over at Paperhead.com offer industry-leading tools that help online bookies grow their business and make bigger profits. When you sign up over at Paperhead.com, you'll get up to 35% cash back credited to your account. Don't beat the bookie. Be the bookie. Paperhead.com, 1-88-978-0288. All right. Speaking of cash, this next gentleman, he's made it as a stand-up comedian. He's made cash as a TV host. Whoa. And he's also made cash playing <laughs> football. Please Triple give it up for our guest, Jared Quay, everyone. <laughs> How are you, buddy? Oh, I'm good. How you good doing? You. Great. Yeah. yeah. Good good segue. Segue. <coughs> thanks for uh, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, I mean, it's rare we actually get a legit athlete on the program. <laughs> I know it's Sean's sports show, but you uh, let's talk about your athletic career. You played. I was gonna say you, you made cash playing. I don't want to imply yeah. that you you made cash playing for the University of Miami, but what was it like <laughs> playing football for the U? Uh, the N double assholes. Uh, <laughs> won't let you get money, man. You nope. know, actually, I found out after as soon as I graduated, they had this big scandal drop that like Nelvin Shapiro was giving away all this money. Yeah, the, there was the this big Ponzi scheme, Shapiro, and he was using it to fund uh, the Miami University of Football. Yeah, and I was pissed because afterwards I was like, that's where they were getting all this money, man. What the <laughs> hell? Where was mine at, man? That's BS. Well, see, I, I had the opposite <laughs> experience. I was paid not to play uh, college football. <laughs> and, uh, you know, actually, I never came close to a football field. I did uh, shake someone's hand after a Penn State game. That's oh. probably the closest I came to yeah. being involved in college football. So now <laughs> you played University of Miami football. What position you play? I was a safety at the University of Miami. I started my junior year and half of my senior year I got hurt. And a guy who still plays in the NFL took my job, and that was kind of how it was. Next and wait, who is, that, who is that guy? He's a linebacker now, Ray Ray Armstrong. He plays for the Giants right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you guys keep in touch? Oh, yeah, it's a family. It's a brotherhood, man, oh, okay. all the time. I yeah, like that. Definitely. Every time they come through L.A., they shoot me out of text and whatnot. And so I got a lot of uh, friends. And, in fact, 
Travis Benjamin is a good friend of mine. He plays on the Chargers now, so I see him a lot more often. Yeah. It's pretty cool. That's awesome, man. But it sucks because, I mean, like, I wanted to be there. Right. Obviously, you want to be the guy. It's, I'm looking at it from a fan's perspective. Like, wow, you got to know NFL guys. Meanwhile, you're like, fuck, yeah, I should have been I an NFL been guy. In the NFL, yeah. Now, you, you – but you got uh, – I know you, you made the team – for the Arizona Cardinals at some point. Walk us through that. So what, what happened? Did you enter the NFL draft? All right, so what happened is I went to the, I, I, I tried to get drafted. I waited there all day. It was a lockout year, which sucked. Yeah. And so, like, if you didn't get drafted, you couldn't figure out what team you were signing with until they un- did the lockout. So I, I found out I was working out with the Cardinals, and my brother was there for the whole summer. And then finally, after the lockout was up, I had three offers. I had the Dolphins, Raiders, and Cardinals. I chose the Cardinals because I was already working out with them. And uh, I got cut, man. It was horrible, man. It was the worst thing that happened. Because, like, when you get signed, you get highly publicized. There's a bunch yeah. of people writing articles, everybody like, in yeah, Denver. Yeah, Jaren's coming to town. On Facebook, like, yo, I always knew you was going to be famous. All the girls <laughs> take me. And then I got cut, right? <laughs> oh, no. How long were you actually from signing with the Cardinals as an unrestricted free agent to getting cut? What was that window like? It was. I was there for six weeks. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually, I let the team in tackles my third preseason game. I had six. And um, and I was all in the fourth quarter. It was just, you know, I was active. Yeah. And uh, it was it was six weeks, but it was fun. And then uh, I got cut. And the worst part, like, even you want to know the worst part about it was? It was my mom because, like, my brother Clay has made the team. Yes. So your brother, your brother is Clay's Campbell, dominant uh, D lineman for the Jags. Huge human being, yes. obviously looking guy of me, like 150 <laughs> pounds more, six inches taller. <laughs> that but, certainly helps in the league. But he's great football height. I'm great Hollywood height, so it worked out <laughs> for the best. <laughs> but, like, no, like, my mom, she didn't know what to do because she understands football to, like, a <laughs> base level of being yeah. a football mom. And so she's looking, like, she's looking at me like, yo, what is Calais doing to make a team that you're not doing? <laughs> So your mom's just like, is that what I'm I was like, what, what are you doing? Are you pregnant with him? You want to do it? You're pregnant with me. All right, what's going on? Yeah, was he getting an extra bottle? What was going on? I don't know. I feel like in class, I, 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 actually, I owed half of that check, man. I remember class, you take half of the loaf of bread, and you would think he's making sandwiches for everybody, and he'd be out there, not just me. So I sacrificed for him to get them millions. <laughs> That's great. I always, I like your mom not being able to process it, and I just imagine the mom like, I'm going to go down there and talk to that GM and say, why you let my boy Calais play and not my boy Jerry? He's a good boy. Calais, come on. We're pulling you away from this team. If they don't want Jerry, they don't want you either. Yeah. They're not your friends. Yeah, we're going to find a new team, right, boys? And Calais is like, no, nah, we're good here. I'm fine. That's Thank guaranteed you. money I got. Come on, Mom. But uh, he ended up on the Jags and uh, dominating, man. Well, you're, you're talking about perfect Hollywood height. I, I found a, a photo on your Facebook profile, and it's of you. We got it here. It's of you hanging out with Larry Fitzgerald and Jamie Foxx. What, was this some sort of event? I mean, you got to meet Jamie Foxx and Larry <laughs> Fitzgerald. What was that like? Oh, that was really dope. So I'm, I'm starting a new show with Yahoo Sports called The Rush. It launches. And so we did the upfronts in New York, and you know Jamie Foxx is mad cool. I've seen him at a couple. I, I was gonna say, yeah, I know, but I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Yeah. He, I've he's, never he's actually. He's pretty much like himself in those movies that he's really cool in. And uh, and Larry, like I knew Larry here and there. Larry's obviously one of the most. He's one of the best football players, you know, a, a Hall of Famer. But at the same time, he's very down to earth, very business savvy. So obviously, he knows the CEOs of all these companies, so they have relationships. And we all got together just to pitch the show, and it was mad cool. They actually let me run the whole interview, and I was out there doing all the talking. That's awesome, man. That's great. What's it? Uh, what was? Do you have any sort of crazy questions for Larry Fitzgerald? Oh man, think about. I, I know Larry. I know, and there's. I don't want to get too much in trouble. Like Larry's the most. <laughs> he's the most media savvy guy. Like he knows yeah. the right things to say in front of all the. He's not going to give you any sort of crazy thing. But if you ever see Larry in the locker room, Larry's like. <laughs> So that's that's what we need to see, locker room Larry. We're just (laughs) locker room Larry. (laughs) Where he's not talking about University of Phoenix and being nice to your mom. He's talking about some crazy ass shit going down, Larry Fitzgerald. Locker room Larry sounds like a garbage pail. (laughs) (laughs) Locker room Larry. All right, well, guys, we got a big game coming up. But uh, before we do, I think it's time. I think we could all use a little Coach T pep talk. Give it up for Coach T, everyone. Hey, Sean. Coach T, what's happening, man? Ah, not much, man. Just enjoying these NBA playoffs. First question for you. Who do you got? LeBron, MJ. 
Oh boy, LeBron, MJ, who do I got? Uh, I'll tell you what I got. I got him sick of this debate. That's what I got. We do this every year at this time. The playoffs start, and everybody wants to decide who's the GOAT. We have LeBron James. He's one of the greatest athletes that's ever lived in the prime of his career. Right in front of our very eyes. Can't we just appreciate the greatness, Skip? <laughs> you know? Getting into a Skip Bayless. I hate Skip. Because <laughs> he never played. Uh, here's the thing. You can't pick just one player. Hell, you can't even decide on just the four greatest players. If you asked 100 people to name their Mount Rushmore basketball, you'd get 100 different answers. If you ask Michael Jordan to name the four greatest basketball players of all time, he'd tell you it's Michael Jordan on the Bulls, <laughs> Michael Jordan on the Wizards, Michael Jordan playing minor league baseball, and Michael Jordan in the movie Space Jam. <laughs> that sounds like Michael Jordan. And why is it just between these two? Do you know how long they've been playing basketball for? Have we forgotten the history of the game? There's so many great players, but yet we only talk about these two. Bill Russell won 11 championships. Oscar Robertson averaged a triple-double for an entire season 50 years before Russell Westbrook ever did it, and his teammates didn't hate him. <laughs> well, well Chamberlain didn't... scored 100 points in a game once and allegedly <laughs> slept with thousands of women. Magic Johnson beat AIDS, guys. <laughs> Larry Bird was white. There's so many great players to choose from. They all have their place in this history of this great game. Just sit back and enjoy the damn game, Skip. We got the rest of our lives to debate this. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Coach T. Always on point, that Coach. Always. You got to love Coach T. Oh. He knows his stuff. I love how he I love how he had and Larry and Larry Bird overcame the fact that he was white. Dude, he overcame whiteness. Which really I, I haven't been able to overcome whiteness in my rec league basketball game. <laughs> Jared can attest to that. They, they fucking destroyed us again last night. Oh. All right, speaking of basketball, did you guys see uh, Shaq <clears throat> and Charles Barkley recently got into it on the NBA show on TNT? And Shaq was you know, he pulled out the championship card, basically like, I got four championships, Chuck. You don't know what you're talking about. Google me. So I doubt Charles Barkley actually Googled him. <clears throat> I Googled him. And I used that information for tonight's big game, Googling Shaq. This, so, didn't he carry Judge Judy recently? <laughs> Shaq's done a lot over the years. All right, so basically here's how it works, guys. I am going to start a, uh, I'm going to throw out a phrase, Shaquille O'Neal plus a couple words. Like, for instance, Shaquille O'Neal AR. And you have to tell me what Google suggests you're trying to search for. Basically, what is the first search answer for for these kind of phrases? Okay. You'll, you'll get it once you see the visual. If we can bring up the first screen, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. So phrase one, Shaquille O'Neal AR. Now, is the first result. These are not in the correct order. I've mixed right. them up. Okay. That's part of the game. <clears throat> Does Google think the first result is arm length, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arizona, or Aristotle? Jared, <laughs> you're up first. Arm length. Arm length. All right. John? That would make the most sense to me. I'm going to, just because it's so weird, I'm going to say Aristotle. You guys are both wrong. Oh. Sorry. It is actually, it's actually Arizona. What? I don't know. <laughs> I, I think he has a deal with Arizona iced tea. Not really sure. <laughs> but uh, he's also, he's, they, if you, do you guys know why they call him the Big Aristotle? That's actually his nickname. It turns out Shaq would just give a bunch of quotes, and one of the quotes that they had attributed to him, he had just stolen from the, philosophers, <laughs> the philosopher Aristotle for years, and no one checked into it. So eventually they figured out that Shaq was a huge liar. <laughs> Phrase two, guys. Shaquille O'Neal, R.A., is the first result Randy Orton, B, Rainbow Man, C, Rap, or D, Rap Man's Not Hot. No idea what a lot of those phrases mean. Jared, you're up first. Uh, rap Man Not Hot is probably number one for sure. It sounds, it sounds fun. 
Uh, John. I, I'm going to go with Rainbow Man. <laughs> You guys are both incorrect. It is rap. Come on. Shaquille O'Neal, rap. Come on. Because Kazam? Yeah, because of Kazam. And he put out some, he put out a couple albums. He's Jack the, Diesel. He's the only athlete to go platinum, only athlete rapper to go platinum twice. Yes. He did it twice. No one else even did it once. Yeah. And you can't name one of his songs. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Kobe, how my ass tastes. <laughs> Kobe, yeah, Kobe, how my ass tastes. Who? That's it not turns on a record, out, is it? It turns out. We'll get to that in a second. But it turns out he blames Kobe Bryant for his divorce, and that's why he's throughout. Basically, what happened was uh, during Kobe Bryant's uh, trial in Colorado for sexual assault, oh, God. he he said to the the. During testimony, he said, oh, man, I should have just paid my girls like Shaq does. <laughs> now, apparently his wife got a hold of this testimony. Oh, God. And now uh, Shawnee O'Neal is divorced and starring in Basketball Wives. Oh. All right. <laughs> Phrase three. Shaquille O'Neal, D.I., is the first result diesel truck, diss track LeVar Ball, diamond earrings, or diabetes? <laughs> Dish track LeVar Ball. Dish track LeVar Ball. All right, John, who do you got? Diesel truck. You guys are both incorrect. It's diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal, besides being he, three NBA Finals MVPs in a row, but also the first guy to have diabetes and his own soda. So give it up. <laughs> Sha Shaquille O'Neal, Hall of Famer all the way. Well, you didn't get any of them right. <laughs> no. You guys have two more shots left. Oh, oh okay. All right. Phrase four. Shaquille O'Neal G. Is it short for girlfriend? Glasses Costco. <laughs> girlfriend 2017. Or girlfriend height. What do you think people want to know, Jared? Girlfriend when, height. Final answer. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Girlfriend height. You guys are both wrong again. What? It's That's just it. girlfriend. Come on. No one cares about his girlfriend's height. You don't think so? I would be really curious. I'm actually kind of curious. She's like 5'2". Yeah, it's it's whatever. If she's not 7 feet it's 5. It's just because people want, weird. To, people want to do the math and be like, is Shaq crushing her in the bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's not. All right. <laughs> They're just, that's, they don't actually care how tall he is. Okay, last and final question. Get this right. You guys are both winners. If not, uh, better luck next time. Shaquille O'Neal is... Does Google think uh, the first result is dead? Islam is a cop, is Irish. Ooh. Jared. Uh, just because it's Google and it's the weirdest shit ever, is dead. John? I would say is Irish. You guys are both incorrect. What? Islam. Islam. Uh, it is Islam. God, America's crazy. Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> is the big Mohammed as well. <laughs> Give it up for Shaquille O'Neal. He's not super practicing. All right, guys, I want a big thanks. Give a big thanks to Jared Quay. Make sure to check him out on Twitter, at Jared Quay. Co-host, as always, John Huck. Big shout-out to Coach T. And, guys, I'd like to leave you, as I always do, with a haiku. Please cue my haiku music. Shaq shouldn't drink soda. Still can't believe Gronk owns coins. Ahmad Rashad, no! That's it for Sean Sports Show. Have a great night, everyone.